today we're going to plant up some window boxes. Now, uh, I like these window boxes. They're nice and um, they're composite, so they're not going to rot. Um, they've got drainage holes because you're going to need that uh, because window boxes can get very heavy when you're filled with soil and water and, and plant material. So you want to make sure that's professionally installed so it won't damage your siding and you've got it anchored on there nice and secure. Now this window box, um, has, because I have the drainage holes, I'm going to put a little um, bit of landscaping fabric down on the bottom and that will keep soil from oozing out um, as, as the water drains because that'll make a mess on your patio. And this window box has a reservoir system and it's a set of PVC with a um, little wicking system. Um, you fill that reservoir with water and then water can wick back up into the soil and then you won't have to water quite as often because window boxes will get very dry very quickly. So we just set that down in the top and set it in and then we're going to fill it with soil. So I've got my box all filled with soil, so I'm ready to plant. And I've gone to the garden center and I've found some great late season annuals that um, are fairly cold hardy as well. So they should hold up um, through the rest of the season. So I've kind of developed a plan in my head, um, but I'm gonna lay it out a little bit first. I'm gonna start with some steepa grass, which is nice and fluffy. And I'm gonna put that in the corner and aim it out to the side. That'll give our box a little bit more width. Um, this stuff, the steepa grass will turn a little bit bronze in the, uh, as it temperatures get cooler, so that's going to be kind of nice because um, I've got a nice fall pellet, um, a color pellet going on here. I'm going to put in some petunias um, and that lovely rust is going to um, trail down the front and give them some nice fall color. Uh, I've got some, a little bit of height uh, with the celosia. We're going to put that in the back. And then I've got kale, which is going to hold up a long time. So we're going to tuck that in the back here. And I've got an, in, a couple different kinds of kale because I like the textures and the um, color difference there. We can kind of set that in the front. Uh, we'll put some, some ageratum, a little complementary color, towards the back. <clears throat> and I've got some marigolds as well. Marigolds are a good diehard plant that's going to last <laughs> all year. And we'll put some little pansies in the front for some color, and they're going to trail down. So I'm liking how that's working out. So we're going to keep going. <laughs> get that all kind of laid out. I can shift a little bit and I think I'm happy with that composition. And so now I can go ahead and plant. So I've got my structural elements put in the box already. Uh, I've got some uh, spillers coming along here. I've got the steepa grass to, out to give it a little bit of width and the uh, petunias that'll cascade down the front and give me a, the spiller effect. I've got some height going with the celosia in the back. And then I've got a little focal point going on with my kale. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put some fillers in. And I'm gonna start with some ageratum and that'll go in the back and we'll kind of Tuck in. I made sure the box is pretty full of soil so I can just sort of pull things out and then tuck that soil back in. Now, Adratum will grow higher, but it'll also spill out a little bit to the side, which will give us a little bit more filler and some width. And I'll put those two in next. Okay. 
I'm going to go with my marigolds next. And I've got enough filler with this marigold that I'm going to kind of wrap it around that celosia. That'll help keep it standing up straight. And that'll also fill in the spot there. Do the same with next. And finally, we're going to put in a little bit of pansies in the front. Okay, so I've got my box all planted up, and it's going to look great um, to clear up till frost. But I thought it might be kind of fun, since it's getting close to fall, to add a few little fall accents. And so I've gone, I've gone around and gathered a few things up. I've got some um, interesting uh, tassels from corn. Um, I live close to a farm, so I was able to find some of these all dried up with the um, for, uh, with the uh, in the field. Um, but you know, if you had sweet corn that you were growing every year, you could save those tassels as they dried up. Uh, I've got some miscanthus that was growing in my ditch, um, but Carl Forster grass or uh, any number of your ornamental grasses in your garden would work the same way. Uh, I've gone to the craft store. You can find a lot of good stuff at the craft store. Um, and uh, I've got cattails here, but you can also use, um, any, they have some, a bunch of pampas grass and things like that um, there that are available. And I might try some of these hydrangeas, and I pulled those out of um, uh, one of the shrubs in the back. And I thought that might kind of give it a little interesting color. It's nice and chartreuse at the moment, but it's going to dry to a nice papery tan uh, later. So let's get started playing with this. Okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to start with this uh, corn tassel here. And I like that uh, dried papery look to it. Um, you know, this can just get tucked right into the soil back there. And it'll go quite a ways in. Now, I don't know if I think that's too tall, but I'm going to start with that. You, we do need to be able to see out the window from the inside. So uh, something to keep in mind when you're putting these little extras in. I like how that gives it a nice backdrop. Now I'm kind of going to work out of the center for the moment. Maybe I'll put a little cluster of cattails in there too. Yeah, I think I really like what I've done with this, um, with those dried accents. That really makes it, gives it a little fall pop. And as soon as these fill out a little bit and start growing in, this is going to look fantastic all fall. <laughs> 